All right, here we go. Today we have Kevin Bledsoe, founder of Bledsoe's world famous barbecue restaurant, which is where we're at right now. One of my favorite barbecue places in all of LA. I've been eating here for years. Appreciate it, man. Hey man, thank you so much for letting us come in here. Thanks for being here, man. This pleasure's all mine. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, it's your first time here, so I want to get into your whole story before we get into all the food no and what everything you want? else like that. So you're born and raised in Compton, born, California. Born and raised. Okay. Yep. Yes, sir. And your dad was a cop. Dad was LAPD. LAPD. And your mom, I guess, used to be a Black Panther. Uh, Black Panther sympathizer, like Pops used to call it. Okay. So, yeah. So yeah. what was Compton like in the, in the 70s? I mean, it was cool. Like I say, Compton is cool no matter what. People get Compton twisted, you know? Compton didn't have no projects. Compton was homeowners. Right. You know, Compton had a gang problem in the late 70s and 80s, but... Other than that, it's home. I ra raised all my kids in Compton. You know what I mean? And like I said, it's like any place else. You know, mainstream media and Hollywood gives it a bad name. It did have a gang problem, but it wasn't a ghetto. I always remember a classmate of mine from college, from Chicago, Cabrina Greens, came to my house one time. And he said, man, I don't never want to hear y'all call Compton a, a ghetto. Compton got sprawled in front and backyards. Mm. You know what I mean? But Compton had a gang problem, though. So. Yeah. Well, your mom actually has a very interesting story. Mm -hmm. And I guess she saw her mom get killed mm -hmm. in, when in she Texas. was like, like nine or 10 years old? Yeah, like uh, 13. Wow. 13 uh, in Texas. Okay, well, yeah. what happened exactly? I, I ain't gonna go in detail, but it was some, it was some horrible stuff. A lady sh uh, shot and killed her. And, and then that night, my uncle, her oldest brother, went and shot and killed the man who was responsible for it. Oh. And that's how my family made it to from Texas overnight to... Uh, to uh, L.A., to Watts. Right, and I, guess, up, I guess your uncles went and just grabbed the whole family and just Well, my, my great uncle did, but my, my mother's oldest brother had, you know, had to put in some work that night, you know, so. Yeah. And I just actually took my mother back uh, to Hooks, Texas, Texarkana, for the first time since it happened in 1959, I think. So yeah. that was incredible. And your dad was more the calm one, your mom was kind of more the... The crazy one from yeah, from what my I mom understand. and her fan. Pops, pops always been mellow. Uh, I mean, they met on some like my mother said they met on some BS because they met in Watts. But uh, my daddy's from Corsicana, Texas, where I live at now in the country. And she said I should have known he was a lying motherfucker then because he said uh, she said where you from? And he said I'm from Dallas. He said okay. He said where you from? He said I'm right outside of Texarkana. And my pops said I'm from Corsicana. She said your country bad. I knew you was. You know what I mean? So she <laughs> said she should have known something then. But uh. You know, they both did their thing. Okay, so you're growing up in Compton, but for the summers, your family sends you back to Texas. Yeah, yeah. With your granny, who wasn't actually your granny, though. Granny's my auntie, my, auntie. my grandmother's sister. Exactly. Yeah, so I was her pick, because they said I look just, she used to say I look like her brother Sane back in the day. So, uh, and like I said, it, it, it gave me a whole nother lease on life, you know, because I could go back to Texas and crawfish and fish and get my huckleberry fin on. You right. know what I mean? Be, be out all night and all that kind of stuff. And then to come back to Compton and a lot of shit you couldn't do. So I, could, I had the best of both worlds. Well, so, so your granny had this illegal barbecue spot. A juke joint. A juke joint. And you started working there early on. Yeah, nine years old. Okay. For nothing. For nothing. Yeah. Right. And that's where you kind of got your, your licks down for actually how to barbecue Texas style and everything else like that. My granny used to always say, Vlad, like, a legal hustle. You got to get a legal hustle. Don't take no penitentiary chances. You know what I mean? Legal hustle was cooking and DJing back then because she said you never know when you're going to fall off. You never know certain things. So, uh, and like we always call it, it's like the karate kid. Instead of wax on, wax off, it's barbecue sauce on, barbecue sauce off. Sauce off. And I always said I never wanted to go in food service, but I didn't know she was teaching me something I was going to be able to do for the rest of my life. Well, you go back to L.A., you enroll in college. Yeah. And then on the side, you're DJing, but you're also catering and so, putting food together. DJing in college, playing ball, and then uh, come back, graduate, come back, work for the Department of Corrections. Mm -hmm. And it happened just like Granny said it was going to happen. said, you too much of an asshole to work for anybody. So I ended up getting fired, you know, and I had to fall back on what, which, what I knew how to do, hustle but legal hustle, and that was DJing and catering, uh -huh. you know. Did that for years, and, and um, lucky enough in the, like in the 90s to do uh, videos, 
Uh, my father raised Mac 10, so he's a close uh, oh, okay. uh, family and nice. DJing for them back. I mean, catering for them back in the day. So my name got out there where are early. So uh, okay, so you work for the Department of Corrections, mm -hmm. so basically a prison cop. Yeah. What was the worst thing you experienced during that time? I mean, I didn't, you know, I didn't really have no bad experiences because uh, okay. I had the Compton car, and uh, any place I went, I had the Compton car, and they knew who I was. Like I say, I was a man when I came up in there. I was a man when I left, so I never really had no problems. You okay. know, I mean, I've seen some, sh now I've seen a, a, a sh like I tell people, I'm, I'm born and raised in Compton, never seen a shooting in my life. The first shooting I seen was at Donovan when I was correction officer, a guy get shot by a, a correction officer. You know, that was the first time I ever seen somebody get shot. Okay, so you start your catering company in LA, and then in 2008, you opened Blood Souls in Compton. Yeah. And you didn't tell anyone about it. You just decided nah. to go and sign this lease. Yeah, because I had a, I was working with another uh, partner at a place in L.A. We called Sweet Baby Jeans, and I knew it was just destined to fail. But during that time, didn't tell, you know, my wife at the time or nothing. Just signed this lease, struggling to pay this lease for six months before anybody knew that we were going to open up Blood Souls. Okay. And restaurants are like the hardest businesses to start up, especially if you have no experience. Yeah, which no you experience. Which you didn't have at the time. No experience, no money. Right. So here you are, you got this barbecue spot in the middle of Compton, and it starts off a little slow in the beginning. Real slow. Yeah. Yeah, real slow. It, it, like anything else, you know, you building your clientele, you uh, doubting yourself, you know what I'm saying? You doing all that at the beginning. And then, like I said, it, it just clicked in. I mean, I was lucky, man. Food TV, uh, uh, just all kind of, and, and one thing, I, I went on a chow ham, and I posted my, I felt like I was ready now. So I went on there with a fake name, and I was like, hey, any of you guys ever heard of Bledsoe's? And my guy, Tony Chow, who was one of the biggest Yelpers out around, I didn't even know. And he was like, oh my God, don't say nothing about it. That's my spot. I don't want everybody to know about it. And once I posted that, it just started. Right, because you went from doing like 10 racks of ribs a day to 75 racks a day to at one point you were doing 200 racks a day yeah, yeah. of ribs. And that's on a slow day. On a slow day. Yeah. Uh, how hard is it to deal, was it to deal with a quickly growing business like that? Because, it was, it was, you know, I mean, having a slow business is bad, but having a, a, a quickly growing business that you're not prepared for, that's a problem also. It is, but it's a learning experience. I mean, yeah. we got hit, so Channel 5, one of the news stations came and did a story on Memorial Day, and then we got hit, and I was, we wasn't prepared for it. You know what I mean? But it's a learning experience. You know what I mean? You got to be knocked down sometimes. So, it, you know, next Memorial Day, we was totally ready. Fourth of July, we was ready. But yes. you, you never know, because like I say, food, TV, and all that was still new. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like, all that was new. So, I mean, we on the internet, Vlad, almost every week. So every week, we getting packed, to pack everybody. Not just the locals, everybody was coming to Compton to get that barbecue. Well, you talked about how growing up in Compton, you didn't really see any violence. Yeah, but I mean, I've seen it, but that's the first time I've seen somebody get right. shot. Well, then in 2009, Someone got shot in front of your restaurant. Yeah, somebody, uh, uh, it was a shooting right across the street. And it's a uh, very, uh, uh, and her name is Harriet. I'm still cool with her, uh, a white lady from Orange County. And she was so upset. And I had to tell her that, hey, 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 yeah. I said, this is the first time I've ever seen somebody get shot. And she totally calmed down. Like, because she really thought that we were used to that kind of shit. We're not used yeah. to that shit, you know? Yeah. Well, I mean, you talked about in your book how you really don't like the way L.A has kind of been shown in movies, like for example, Boys in the Hood. Yeah, yeah. Like what was your problem with Boys in the Hood? I mean, I, I just like, I mean, I love Singleton, like whatever, whatever, but it, a lot of those scenes just made us look barbaric. A dead body in the neighborhood, nobody go claim the dead body. That, that baby got mother and father somewhere and that we, we're cool with that. I'm born and raised, my people born and raised and watch. I've never, nobody's never been cool with no shit like that. You know, like, uh, I mean, just all that, like, like, we know it's a gang problem, we know it's a lot of shit, we know it's some cold-blooded shit, but when you act the normal people in the neighborhood and act like they don't give a damn, nah, that's bullshit. And the boys and who was in the Crenshaw district. Yeah. That's like Compton, it's homeowners. Yeah. 